You guys trade DeAnthony Melton for a first-round pick and watch Kyle Anderson leave in free agency. And I'm just wondering, as you watch that unfold, do you just bide your time and you're like, we're happy with the guys we got, we'll go to war with anybody? Or do you kind of look around and be like, huh, there's a lot going on here and we're not kind of, kind of participating in it yet? Me, personally, when I get ready for war, I'm not worried about who's on the other side. Mm. Worry about what I got. And, you know, that's who I'm rolling with. So, as far as who we made, you know, any offseason moves, I'm not worried about it. They got to see Memphis. So, a couple weeks ago, I made a video detailing the Western Conference in the upcoming season. And I was basically talking about how Golden State is going to be at the top and everyone else would need to find a way to knock them off. But I made no mention of the Memphis Grizzlies in that video because I assumed that with the losses of both DeAnthony Melton and Kyle Anderson in free agency, and with Jaron Jackson being out for most of the year due to injury, I felt that they had lost too much depth to be able to make any noise in the West. Uh, yeah. That might have been wrong. Durant. Durant for three. Bingo! 35 of the 74 by Houston. Moran a spin and a make off glass to Conchar. Lob. Moran. But the tap comes to Jalen Green. Doesn't have numbers. Steps through. What the shot? You've got to be kidding me. Moran. While they did lose valuable pieces, they've been off to an amazing start, largely thanks to the unbelievable play from John Moran. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to talk about the Grizzlies' start what's been working, and about how John Morant could have a very real chance to win this year's MVP. So let's get into the video. So real quick, I know a lot of you guys watching this are not subscribed, so if you do fall into that category, please feel free to hit the sub button, it only takes a second and it really helps out a lot. Also be sure to hit the bell, and also be sure to leave a like as that also helps out a lot. So coming into this season, a lot of people, myself included, were a bit skeptical about what the Memphis Grizzlies would be able to do in such a tough Western Conference. Because like I said before, in the offseason they lost Kyle Anderson to Minnesota, and they lost DeAnthony Melton in a pretty head-scratching trade to the Philadelphia 76ers, where they didn't really even get anything of value back. And so we saw that, and then we would find out that Jaron Jackson Jr. had surgery in the offseason for a stress fracture in his foot, and that he would be out for four to six months. So now, with one of their best players out, likely until after the new year, we didn't really think that they would be able to do anything of value in this tough Western Conference that has only gotten tougher this year thanks to some returning teams. Enter Demetrius Jamel Morant. Because what's happening right now has to be extremely worrying for the rest of the league. The guy who just won most improved player last year now looks like he's made another big leap in just his fourth season. It doesn't look like there will be that many teams that will be able to slow him down. In his first four games, he's averaging over 35 points, 4 rebounds, and 7 assists with shooting splits of 55, 60, 86 for a true shooting percentage of 68.5%. This is headlined by a 49 point game that he recorded against the Houston Rockets in the second game of the season. And this has led the Memphis Grizzlies to a 3 and 1 start, which will likely be 4 and 1 by the time you're seeing this video. And it's been some of the most entertaining basketball that I've ever seen in my entire life. The high flying dunks, the finishing around the rim, the defensive plays, the playmaking, and the three point shooting. With all of that, he looks like one of the most complete players in the NBA right now, and it's because he's shown improvement in two of those areas, those two improvements being his defense and his three-point shooting. These were areas where he wasn't necessarily bad, those just weren't his strengths. It might take a little bit longer to truly determine exactly how much he's improved on defense, but it definitely looks promising after these first few games. He's a smaller guard, so he's not going to have a lot of plays where he's just bodying people up. But in terms of things like shot contests, getting a hand up, getting blocks like this, you can definitely see an improvement. Now it is clear that he still has a lot of room for improvement because there are still certain plays where he just looks lost. But again, he's shown promise. Like this ball denial on KD, for example. This is an area where, again, I want to see exactly how much he's improved before making any conclusions. But the three-point shooting, I mean, we see his three-point percentage at 60%, but of course we all know that's not going to last. 
However, we should expect to see a rise in his three point percentage from last season to this season. I'm not sure if he's going to be that close to that 40% mark by the end of the year, but we should definitely expect to see improvement. His shot just seems more fluid, especially off a of pick and roll. And last season, he didn't really take that many outside shots unless the defense was literally letting him shoot them. These first few games, he definitely looks more confident taking those outside shots, and some of them have been pretty deep and contested, like this dagger three he had against the Brooklyn Nets. Morant deep! And like I said before, the Memphis Grizzlies are sitting on a 3-1 start, largely thanks to his play, but also thanks to some other players stepping up. Desmond Bain was sort of disappointing to start the season, shooting just 26% in his first three games. However, he was able to turn it around after scoring a career-high 38 points against the Brooklyn Nets, a game in which he shot 14 for 21 from the field overall and 8 for 11 from three. His field goal percentage has dropped, but his three-point percentage is exactly where you would expect it to be at 41% on nearly 10 attempts per game, by the way. If he keeps that up, which is very possible, he has a chance to become just the third player in NBA history to shoot 40% from three on 10 attempts per game, joining only Stephen Curry and Damian Lillard. I know that it's still early, but I can definitely see someone like Desmond Bain joining that list. However, I also realize that he's been wildly inconsistent so far this season, so we'll just have to wait as time goes on to see what happens there. They've also been getting additional help from guys like Tyus Jones and Steven Adams. However, I'm going to wait to judge the team as a whole because they have yet to play a lot of good defensive teams. The five teams they've played are the Knicks, who rank 8th in defensive rating, the Rockets, who rank 20th, the Mavericks, who rank 12th, the Nets, who rank 29th, and the Kings, who rank 21st. So although they are playing really well right now, there is a chance that it could simply be because of the level of competition they faced in the early part of the season. So we'll have to wait until they play some really good defensive teams like the Bucks or the Suns sons or the Clippers before we get a really good understanding of what we can expect out of this team. And that's one of the things that could really impact John ja Morant's potential hunt for his first MVP, because team record plays a major role in who's considered for the award. I think most of us know this by now. And so if this early start is just a fluke and we start to see them going on losing streaks once they get past this, then it's going to be pretty difficult for him to have any chance of winning the award no matter how well he plays. But of course, teams adapt, and let's also not forget that Jaron Jackson Jackson will be back sometime in December or January, and that is going to help them out a lot. And if all goes well, we could see Memphis having a similar season to the one they had last year, only this time with an even better version of John Morant. And I don't know about you, but that is not a team that I would want to face in a playoff series because you never know what could happen, but we'll have to wait and see. But that's about it for me. I want to know what you guys think. What seed do you guys think the Memphis Grizzlies will end up this year? And do you think John Morant will win the 2023 MVP? And if not, who do you think will win it over him? Let me know what you think. But with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell to be notified when I upload. Comment down below what you want to see next. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.